this patch of ground I run as a kind of independent small garden just to see how it can go and it's 25 square meters 270 square feet all no dig and the no dig part of it makes it very easy to second crop to succeed with succession so everything you can see here apart from three vegetables is a second planting made in the summer after a previous harvest so perhaps if I just mentioned the three that have been here all the time or longer term there's sorrel which we're picking for salads lovely lemon flavor that's perennial there's another perennial plant over there which is perennial kale taunton dean and there's a pepper plant here actually well a couple in fact which are just ripening it's october now so we're mid-autumn and it's a very good time to show you the summer plantings so for example this kale this red russian kale I planted in early August, so it's not been in the ground for a very long time. It was sown in early July, and it's a beautiful um, leaf for cooking and salads through the autumn, winter, and next spring. And here is chicory. So this is a plant which will make hearts that, again, we put in, in salad. This one has really pretty... Um, leaves that go pink and yellow right in the middle of the heart and chicory is famous for being bitter and in Britain at least for partly for that reason I think it's not much eaten but actually when you get a heart like these are doing um, there's sweetness as well so it's bittersweet really rich flavor and they both the chicory and the kale are following onions so we've had a really nice crop of uh, red onions in this case already from these bits of ground and then a slightly later planting than those two is over here. And this is a range of autumn salads where we have mostly mustards, the red lace, gorgeous red mustard and green frills. And then there's rocket as well. So salad rocket, green brigade rocket and a sky rocket. So different types of rocket for salads. And all of these plants were sown in modules in the greenhouse on the 3rd of August and then planted here as very small plants on the 15th. So they were barely two weeks old when they went in the ground. But it, what that means is you've just got, you've got them underway. I find often I get a lot of damage if I sow seeds direct, whereas raising plants in controlled conditions, they can be only small at planting stage, but it means that I get a full bed. You'll notice there's no gaps here. Everything has succeeded. I'm keeping the edges tidy, that reduces slugs. Uh, generally on top of things and with no dig you get very few weeds, that also means less slugs. So just the whole thing becomes quite easy. And this bed, the mustards and rocket and fennel actually, which was planted at the same time, all followed courgettes. So this had courgettes here that were cropping in June, July, and up to the middle of August. We took the courgettes out on the 15th of August in the morning planted these in the afternoon of that day. Just at the end there's a little broccoli plants as well. And over here I'm going to hop over again to show you the spinach because this was planted 10 days after the mustards. So this went in the ground on the 25th of August from a sowing I made on the 10th. And it's a variety or type of spinach called Medania. M-E-D-A-N-I-A, -A, which I've grown for many years now, has never let me down, and it makes these beautiful, lush, rich, thick leaves, which are ready to harvest now for sure. And then the plants will stay here over winter as quite small plants. Uh, they tolerate a lot of frost, and then they will crop from late March, say, through April and May until they flower in early June next year. So that's nine months after they were sown. And it's not a well-known thing, and it deserves to be much better known, that the best time of year to sow spinach is August. It's one of the many things I mention in my diary, because it's I've noticed over the years that timings are what often lead people astray. And if you sow something at the wrong time, you get problems like spinach flowering if you sow it in the spring. So sow it in August, you get lovely harvest in the autumn, survive the winter, and harvest again in the spring, all from that one sowing. 
And then one other way that you can increase your harvests without taking even too much space is here, where I'm doing a bit of intercropping. So between the fennel, I've planted some, there were little plug plants of lamb's lettuce. And they're now starting to grow while the fennel is maturing. The fennel's not gonna get very big, it's a bit late in the season to make enormous bulbs, but there'll still be a harvest. And then once that's gone, the lamb's lettuce will carry on growing and make a winter harvest of salad leaves, as will the mizuna. So again, I popped in some little plugs of mizuna amongst the fennel, and actually even amongst the mustards. We, we even planted a few spring onions amongst those mustards. They're kind of hiding at the moment. I don't know to be sure if they're gonna make it actually, but it's the sort of thing you can do, you know, uh, have fun, have a little play, try these things. And again, it comes back to no dig. You know, this amazing method of not disturbing the soil means you have a lot less weeds to worry about. And that can be the factor that spoils a lot of these things. But when you have very few weeds, we've done very little weeding here over the year. It gives you much more freedom and time to do these extra sowings, to remember in the summer, mm, what can I sow now? And plant it and enjoy harvest through the autumn and winter. The tomato plant here has been growing since early June and it followed kale. So this was red Russian kale on this end of the bed last autumn, winter and spring. We simply twisted out in late May when it's finished flowering put some fresh compost on about three centimeters for maybe plant tomatoes and there were four actually this is the main survivor it's not got light quite remarkable it's a variety called prima bella incredibly blight resistant and so lovely tomatoes there in the middle of october with after we've had a lot of blighty weather this crop is under mesh and that's because we have a lot of sparrows here and the sparrows love to eat uh, ruby chard and beetroot leaves. That's their favorites. In fact, they don't make holes like that. They've, I think one's been getting in and having a pack. But basically this is chard which went in in early July from a late June sowing. And it followed wild rocket that we were harvesting here in the spring. So I'll just put this mesh back to keep those sparrows out mostly and discourage them. The leeks here were sown a long time ago. They were sown in the middle of May. It's now October, so that's five months ago. And they were planted here in early August after parsley, actually. We had a lot of parsley here in the spring. There's one parsley plant that survived right the way through. And so these leeks were raised in pots as, as multi-sown seedlings. And they've got a long way to go into, until, well, they can grow a lot more, I should say. Um, to be big and I reckon to harvest these in March and April next year so they'll stand there all winter. It's a hardy variety uh, or particularly hardy variety which will stand all that time. And one other interesting thing about the leeks here compared to everything else, um, they're more of a one-off harvest. Pretty much everything else in this garden we're picking leaves off all the time like we've had quite a few kale leaves, spinach leaves, sorrel, chard, chicory hearts, even I've harvested rocket and mustards. But the leeks is a one-off, so they'll come ready late March in April.